Hello! In this video tutorial, we will review new tools for working with the AB Color Grid, which appeared in the 3D LUT Creator program in version 1.4. We already have similar tools for working with the curves. Now, some of them are available for working with the AB Grid. These tools change the grid so that the image color gets certain characteristics of the reference color that is displayed in this color field. If you double click on it, you will see a window where you can select this color. You can also use the color field or enter the color manually. However, it is much more convenient to just hold down the Alt key and click on the desired color. You can click both the working image and the reference if you have it loaded. Let's choose the color of the grass as the reference color. So, by clicking on the image with the exact tool, the grid bends so that the color under the cursor becomes identical to the specified color. That is, we change the hue, saturation, and lightness. Let's try to repaint the car now. The color of the car becomes the same as the color of the grass. Note that four points around the selected color have changed. This is true for all these grid tools. I choose a different color, for example this one. Now I load the reference image and I take the color from the reference. For example, this one. Yellow. Purple. Turquoise, and so on. Thus, you can repaint the image in the color that you need. For what can it be useful? Suppose you are shooting products for an online store and you need to shoot one product that has different colors. And suppose you have a table of reference values for the colors in which your product should be painted. You make one frame, load your reference colors, click on them with the Alt key pressed down, and then on your image. So you save time. Let's consider the next tools. The color tool, by clicking on the image, bends the grid so that the color changes while maintaining the original likeness. That is, we take the hue and saturation of the reference and the lightness remains as in the original image. I choose yellow as the reference color and click on the car. The original lightness of the image is preserved. On the reference, the yellow color is much brighter. The hue tool only changes the hue. Saturation and lightness do not change. That's what will happen if you select a yellow color on the reference or a blue color. The luminance tool only changes the lightness. To specify the reference values of lightness, it is convenient to use a neutral gradient. In our case, we have gray patches. I take the lightness from here and the picture becomes brighter. I will try the rest of the patches. Note that when the lightness changes, the unpinned points also fall under the influence, so we get smooth gradients. If you change the hue first and then you try to change the lightness, you may get banding. I will return to such an example later. Let's swap the working image and reference. To do this, I press the Alt and Equal keys. Let's try to change the individual colors on this image without affecting the others. Suppose I need to repaint the orange patch to blue. Notice how many colors were repainted. Compare the before and after. Why is this happening? First, the points were not pinned. Second, the grid size was too small. If we increase the grid size and pin all the points, the repainting will proceed more accurately. Only two patches have changed. For even more accuracy, you can choose a square grid. Now only one color is repainted. The rest doesn't change. I hope the basic principles of these tools are clear. Now let's turn to some practical examples. I load this photo and adjust the white balance. Note that the guitar has a green color cast from the background. Let's remove it. I select the exact tool, select the color I want, and click on the guitar. I changed the hue, saturation, and lightness. But there is still a small green part below the hand. If I click on it with the exact tool, it will become too bright. In addition, a red stroke appears around the guitar. The stroke appeared because the tool drags four points around the selected color. In this case, if we go one action back, you can see that our color was between the points that are already separated from each other. Therefore, by clicking on the shadow, they move further away towards the red color. They can be returned to their place, but this will not solve the problem with the lightness. 
In this case, you need to use the color tool because it does not change the original lightness and you need to increase the grid size for a more selective adjustment. I will click on the guitar and on the shadow. Done! Here is the image before the corrections on the AB grid. There is the after and the global before after. Let's consider the example with a skin tone. I adjust the white balance. Now I try to remove a small green color cast from the skin. I increase the grid size. Here you can change only the hue. I choose the skin color that I would like to see here and click on the green skin. This is before the corrections on the AB grid. That's the after. Let's see the whole image. Here is a global before after. Let's try to work with this image which is familiar to us from the previous lessons. I remove the blue light. I'll take the color for repainting from here. I use the color tool. That's what happens. This is the before and that is the after. Let's consider the last example. As a reference, I will use this dark wood texture. I would like to repaint the wooden shelves. If I make it with the exact tool, I will have oversaturated color. In this case, I would like to have a muted saturation. To do this, I first select the luminance tool and change the lightness, and then select the hue tool and change the hue. The saturation is not changed. This is the before, and that is the after. Note that if I first apply the hue tool and then apply the luminance tool, I get these artifacts. Why? Because when you change the lightness, the impact is transmitted to unpinned points. But I already changed the hue and these points have become fixed. Therefore, the changes in the lightness did not spread beyond the fixed points. Weakly saturated colors did not change and we got color banding. Therefore, in such cases, you should first change the lightness. As can be seen from the AB grid, the changes in the lightness affect neighboring points. Therefore, there are no artifacts in the image. And now I choose the Hue tool and change it. That's all. I hope this video was useful to you. See you in the next lesson.